Hello, my name is Ryan Sterry, and I am a regional dairy educator working for UW Extension located in northwestern Wisconsin. Today we're going to talk a little bit about spring alfalfa quality monitoring and how we can use that information to help time first cutting of our alfalfa crops. High quality forage, particularly alfalfa, is necessary to support the well-being of the dairy and livestock industries in Wisconsin. Wisconsin farmers grow and harvest approximately 2 million acres of alfalfa and mixed hays annually. The first cutting of alfalfa, alfalfa represents approximately 36 to 41 percent of the total alfalfa dry matter yield for the entire growing season. First crop is also most digestible cutting due to its slower growth and development during the cooler temperatures experienced during May. If cutting and harvest of first crop is mismanaged, oftentimes second, third, and fourth crops cannot fully replace the loss value and quality of first cutting. We want to start off talking a little bit about how to plan your harvest and setting your harvest goals. So first off, we need to talk about determining what quality your farm needs. We want to match the forage quality to the animal's needs. We strongly recommend you communicate with your professional consultants and nutritionists to determine the level of RFE or RFQ your dairy and livestock operation requires. Many farms target levels higher than the previously established alfalfa grass forage quality level of 150-170 RFE for milking herds. Every farm will likely have different forage quality goals, so you need to discuss them before cutting and harvest begins. Weather can and will impact harvest goals, so be sure to take that into account as well. Next, we want to adjust for quality losses. Under the best of conditions, 15% or more of the dry matter, most importantly the leaves, may be lost during the cutting and harvesting process. Therefore, it may be necessary to cut a field at 185 to 190 RFE or RFQ to end up with a harvested forage of 160 or higher. Next, we want to make some adjustments for total harvest timing. For planning purposes, we can use the average first cutting forage quality rate of change of 3 to 5 points of RFE or RFQ per day. Each farm operation differs in the amount of time it takes to harvest first cutting from the first day you start harvest until the last day you complete first cutting harvest. If it takes seven days to harvest first cutting, the last day alfalfa harvest would have experienced a loss of 21 to 35 points of RFV or RFQ while standing in the field waiting to be cut. And then finally, we want to take into consideration our local field conditions. Grass, clover, and alfalfa mixed stands will reach the stated forage quality earlier than a pure alfalfa stand. Stands on lighter soils will tend to begin growing earlier and mature faster and less conditions are droughty. South slopes may also mature earlier than the north slopes. If you're growing a low lignin alfalfa variety, also take that into consideration. Now that said, there's also a trade-off between quality and yield during first cut alfalfa harvest. So in this graphic from Kim Cassida at Michigan State University, we can see in the red line that as we move from vegetative to bud to bloom stages of alfalfa maturity, that protein digestibility and pretty much all our quality measures are going to start declining. And then as we look at the green line in this chart, we can see yield is going to increase as our alfalfa crop matures. So in the previous slide, we talked a little bit about the industry has moved to higher standards for looking at relative forage quality and relative feed value for first cutting. But conversely, if you don't need that high of a quality, say for a dry cow or heifer ration, and you can store that forage separately, there may be an advantage to waiting in terms of you're going to increase your yield by waiting. As we talk about monitoring alfalfa quality, you may hear us use two acronyms. RFE, which stands for relative feed value, or RFQ, which stands for relative forage quality. They are very similar concepts and formulas used based on lab results. However, relative forage quality is the newer of the two formulas, 
and it does a little bit better job accounting for differences in fiber digestibility and correlating that to differences in intake as well. If you have grasses mixed in with your alfalfa forages, we highly encourage you to use RFQ, again, because it does a little bit better job accounting for digestibility. On that note, samples that go to the lab for testing may give you the option of requesting either RFE or RFQ analysis to be performed. While on average, RFQ testing may cost a little bit more, we encourage you to do so when the option is made available to you. And here we can see uh, a sample forage analysis report. And if we zoom into our energy calculations here, we can see where we can find relative forage quality on this particular lab result. For an alfalfa scissors clips program, you want to begin collecting samples around midway. Select alfalfa fields that are second production year or older if possible. We want to take samples twice weekly until the forage quality falls below desired harvest quality or until our harvest date. We recommend taking samples on Mondays and Thursdays so results can be processed by the lab in a timely manner and are available by Tuesday and Friday. A sample in the early morning before 8 a.m. when at all possible. This is going to reduce day-to-day -day variability due to differential accumulation of non-structural carbohydrates in the leaf on sunny versus cloudy days. We want to cut our scissor clip samples two to three inches above ground level. It's very similar to what our cutting height would be. And we want to collect at least a half a pound of plant material. If fields are uniform in growth, we can collect from an area half acre or less. But if we have some variability in our fields, we want to sample a larger area to get a representative result that's going to account for that. Another tool that we have in our toolbox for monitoring spring alfalfa quality is the peak stick. On the left hand side here we can see each side of the peak stick is calibrated differently depending on the stage of production. If we're in the vegetative bud or bloom stage, each of those scales on the ruler is a little different for estimating the relative feed value. On the right hand side here we can see we picked what we thought was a representative area of the field. We're measuring the tallest stem. In this particular case, it's landing somewhere between 210 and 220 points on the relative feed value state scale for vegetative stage. Now, we want a similar to our scissor program, pick a representative area in the field. If the field is highly variable, pick a few different spots in the field. We want to repeat this multiple times. We want to do this five to 10 times and get an average to estimate where that field is at that particular time. And to wrap up, we want to point out that the University of Wisconsin Extension maintains a forage quality changes during spring growth website where you can look up results throughout the state. So at the top here, we have our URL for this website that leads you directly to the scissor clip portion of it. And if we look a little bit further down here, um, we have a few selections you can make as you're searching. If you want to look at all results, there's peak or scissor clip results, and then our location and date range for that. So with that, thank you for joining us today. If you have any further questions, you can either contact myself or Michael Geisinger. Between Michael and myself, we are the regional egg educators in Northwestern Wisconsin covering Barron, Pierce, Polk, and St. Croix counties. Thank you.